If you're like me, you've always wanted to visit the town of Cartagena in Colombia. It's safe to say my expectations were way up there, but there were definitely some things I didn't like. So is Cartagena overrated? Let's get to the bottom of this. So first of all, getting to Cartagena is extremely easy. It's just a 90 minute flight from Bogota. And upon arriving at the airport, I took a cheap Uber into town. As usual, it's probably best to avoid the scammy taxi drivers at the airport. I stayed at a hostel called Republica. Their dorms go for about $20 a night, which is definitely more than what I've been paying on this trip. And that is the first thing I will say about Cartagena. Prepare your wallet accordingly. This hostel, for example, charges three times the normal price for beers, and I'm sure that's par for the course in Cartagena. The hostel itself was super nice with great facilities and a nice pool that you can lounge in all day to escape the extremely high humidity. While I was there, the average humidity got up to around 80%. If you stay at Republica, I do suggest you getting breakfast included in the room because it was really delicious and I definitely took full advantage of that. So the first day, I went for a stroll around the walled city where the hostel is located. This part of Cartagena is absolutely amazing with its colorful 16th century buildings inherited from the Spanish. Just going for a walk was truly a magical experience in itself. But unfortunately, as it is in a lot of places, as a foreigner, it won't take long for you to be approached by one of the incessant street vendors. They are literally everywhere in town. <laughs> So actually, during my stay in Cartagena, I started telling these guys that I was from China whenever they came up and asked me where I was from, trying to sell something. Feel free to use that when you're in Cartagena. A little later, I thought about making it a beach day since Playa Boca Grande was just a 45 minute walk from where I was staying. But after reading the reviews on Google, I quickly gave up on the idea. Apparently there as well, the hawkers are really insistent and they don't leave you alone on the beach at all. I also noticed from afar that the beach is along a huge avenue with tons of buildings, so it really didn't seem like my vibe. So instead, I decided to visit the very artistic Getse Mani neighborhood, which is a short walk from the walled city center. This part of town is known for its vivid murals that can be found literally everywhere. I took a stroll through its narrow streets and admired all the artwork. So when you're there, make sure you visit Getse Mani neighborhood. It's also very touristy, but the vendors seem to leave you alone a little more. There are also tons of hip restaurant and bar options, making it a great location to stay in. If I were to go back to Cartagena, I would probably stay in the Getse Mani neighborhood. After that, I grabbed some natural juice in the Holy Trinity Square, a popular hangout spot, and some delicious arepas at Colombi Italia that seems to get a lot of business. I definitely recommend them as a food option, and if you want another option for delicious arepas in the Cartagena walled city center, I would suggest going to Quero Arepas. And by chance, I was lucky enough to be in Colombia on July 20th, that's their Independence Day. So they put on a massive parade and I was definitely impressed by all the groups that were performing there. It also felt like the perfect opportunity to walk along the city walls and watch everything from a little higher up. That night I ended up going on a pub crawl with some people from the hostel, but honestly the prices were so inflated that I just ended up drinking cheap beers in front of a liquor store for most of the night. I feel like going on a boat tour is probably the best thing you can do after you've done all the walking around Cartagena. Due to financial restraints, I didn't do any of them, but I was certainly intrigued by this place called Casa en el Agua, a hostel that is literally on its own island. It's a two hour boat ride away from Cartagena and the dorms go for about $50 a night, but it did seem like a pretty unique experience. 
Some people I met did a tour around the Rosario Islands, but honestly, they didn't even like it that much. They said it kind of felt like a field trip where you spend most of the day on the boat and just about 30 minutes on the islands before they call you back to the boat. That said, of course, there are numerous things that you can do around Cartagena if you're willing to pay for those expensive boat trips. Unfortunately or fortunately, I did not get to experience that. I've always wanted to go to Cartagena, so of course my expectations were way up there. And although the beauty of the town with its colonial Spanish architecture didn't disappoint, I was just about ready to get out of there due to the incessant vendors and the lack of nice beaches that don't require a really expensive boat ride to get to. My next stop in Colombia was Santa Marta, and not only did it provide more accessible day trips, but I also wasn't being harassed by street vendors all day. So let's go, follow me to Santa Marta and you can see if it's the right place to visit for you. I'll see you in Santa Marta in three, two, one, 